she wants to speak when I get up at four o'clock. I'm going to speak to solely in reference to the application of, of the, uh, the land use and not into the character. We're, we're well aware of that. So that's, we just want to keep things moving. And we're going to ask you to uh, limit your comments to five minutes. And they again only address the board. And when you're done, if you can leave, let somebody else come in because there's a lot of people out there. Um, and again, addressing uh, addressing us. Um, that said, Jesse, you want to come up and speak, and we'll start with you. Can someone confirm that that doesn't hear the conversation? I'm. Uh, I just admitted four people into it. Do you want to try again? Sorry about it. Yeah. My apologies. Not the first time Donnie Brooks has been in public with a mask on. Uh, I'm Jesse. It's my wife, Jolene. We appreciate all of you coming. Um, I was told that I am to address the board, so I feel disrespectful turning my back on you guys, but uh, I'm going to follow the rules. Um, I thank you guys. Um, just going through this, I realize that you guys are in a tough situation. You have to see everyone in this room, and there will be people that are upset, no matter what your decision is. I want you to know on behalf of my wife and I and our friends, we will never be set upset with you outside of this. Um, do your job, read the law, and interpret it the best you can, and there will be no hard feelings on our part, no matter what. And uh, we appreciate your service. I've been stuck in that situation before. You have to decide, and it's a lot of the place to be, and somebody has to do it. Thanks for doing it. Um, I ask that anyone uh, that is here in support of my wife and I kind of follow Rob's rules. Speak to the board. Don't bother getting into any debates. Um, you represent Joy and I being here, and we appreciate it, and I want you to act classy and be respectful the way we always are. If somebody says something to you, don't worry about it. Um, just address the board, and, and I know you guys will, and I'm, I'm really honored with how many people uh, showed up on our behalf. Um, I wanted to mention that the special use permit, I think there's been a big uh, complex as to what a special use permit pavilion is. It is good for one year, correct? And it always has to be renewed and looked over every year. So nothing is grandfathered in and nothing is forever and nothing is going to ruin everything. Anything we do, we will be held accountable for and reviewed every year. Nothing is forever. It's a special use permit for one year. Um, and I asked the board that all questions <clears throat> both for and against the special use permit, like you said, should be applicable and actually in the ordinance 612. Uh, I ask that you enforce this. Uh, it is the law and, and no speculation, no skewing things. It has to be talked about. It has to be in, if it's talked about, it has to be in the special use permit. Um, I start this uh, with the application that you received from the Genesee County Planning uh, Board. Uh, and I want to remind you, um, those people don't know me. And to my knowledge, they don't know the people against me. They strictly go by the law and go by the ordinance set in place by the county and this town. They read it. They approved it. Um, I'll start by... My face is already sweating. Um, the, the plan, oh yeah, I can take this out. You guys can hear me all right? Oh, that's way better. Um, the planning board, am I too loud? You're good. You guys can all hear me? <clears throat> the planning board's decision was approval with modifications. The explanation, I'll read that real quick. Given that the property is identified as having New York State DEC regulated wetlands, as well as potential federally regulated wetlands, the required modification is that prior to final town approval, the applicant provide written documentation from the New York DEC project, from the New York DEC that the project will not be encroaching on these wetlands. You guys have received that letter, correct? <clears throat> In addition, the applicant shall provide documentation and or permit from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for potential federal wetlands. You've also received an email from them. We are COVID dependent. <clears throat> then they write, with this required modification, the two that I spoke of, the proposed ATV track should pose no significant countywide or intercommunity impact. It is recommended, and then they go on to say that we should set up a 911 call for anything. So that is from the Genesee County Planning Department. Yeah. 
So Jolene and I would like to apply for a special use permit for an ATV slash motocross track, motocourse track, section 612, page 59 of your town ordinances. I'm just gonna read off the ordinances. If you have any questions, I guess ask me any questions or you can wait till the end. Uh, a, B, and C, establishment definitions, locations, requirements. The boundary of our event and course will be well outside of the 200 foot from the highway and 1,000 foot from a dwelling location requirements. I provided you with a map of that. D, minimum lot area for this permit is five acres. That's what you guys have to have to have something like this. We own 110 acres and we'll be using around 10 acres of our 110 to host this event. We would like to host three events in the 2020 season, obviously COVID dependent. That equates to us using less than 10% of our property for less than 1% of the year. I feel bad I'm not looking at any of you as I'm speaking. It's odd to have it spaced out. Uh, e, operation of, this is your ordinance, operation of a racetrack or course, sound. There is no sound decibel rating in this town. There is nothing to go by. Um, therefore, I purchased a sound decibel measuring device and measured existing sounds that already are allowed and accepted in this area and on this specific premises. Snowmobiles, motorcycles, dump truck, and a minivan. I had four people with four four-wheelers and two chainsaws run wide open at the distance that is less than what the ordinance calls for in a wide open with no foliage and no buffers. I then compared the decibel measurements to decibel measurements allowed with, of allowed vehicles and our machines fell well below already existing noise levels. Our high was 48 and the existing noise levels were 71, a, a minivan passing by. Um, yesterday, one neighbor was running a chainsaw. Another guy, neighbor was running a lawnmower every day in that block, people are doing things. It's fine, it's a community. This is not new, hearing new noises, especially on Route 19. Um, I stapled that one, but loudspeakers is also in E. Loudspeakers are said to not carry more than 2,500 feet from the perimeter of a track in all direction. We don't have any loudspeakers. I don't think we will have any loudspeakers. However, if we do, we will stay within these guidelines and also do a trial run before any event surrounding and the surrounding neighbor and find an acceptable level. Common courtesy goes a long ways. We have it, we get it. Air quality, respect for surroundings and all neighbors. Again, this is your ordinance. Our course or track or mud butt will be in the center of our property as far from any neighbor as possible as to respect their privacy and their quality of life. Nothing we do or build will lessen the existing value of their properties. Any debris on the road at entrances or exits will be cleaned quickly and efficiently. I know we can do as good or better than any local agriculture business does in this manner. I know this because I grew up working on every local farm here. Neighbors will not incur any disturbance more than a disturbance of what any agriculture activity would create. No disturbances more than any an average daily traffic creates. No disturbances more than the existing snowmobile trail on Perry Road creates, which that of which these neighbors use. As an example of this understanding, I will refer to the fact that Joy and I have a neighborhood shop party at our <clears throat> home two blocks away from this property and have had this event for 15 years. We have we now host over 2,500 people a year on a humble five acres. We have never had any issues or tickets from the police, EMS, DEC, health department, highway department, town, county, state, et cetera, et cetera. Not one infraction ever, 15 years, all bordering and most surrounding neighbors join us. I have never, nor have my guests ever damaged, pestered or harmed any neighbor or neighbor's property in the 15 years of existence while hosting tens of thousands of people over that time frame. I believe this track record shows that we obviously understand decency and common sense, common courtesy, and we will go above and beyond to be a respectful and polite neighbor and host a fun community event while also staying within the parameters of pavilions, ordinances, and special use permit guidelines. Another thing I want to say is, you guys, we don't really have an event ordinance. Therefore, we had to dive into, on Rob's advice and on my lawyer's advice, this permit. We don't really want to have a track. We want to have an event. We don't have one. So we are actually abiding by a tremendous amount of rules that 
technically don't even really have anything to do with this. It's fine. We're doing it. Um, F, uh, Julian and I wanted to attend a few other events and nail down the time frame. But when this, when we really started to nail this down, the COVID hit and we haven't been able to obviously attend any. So we just said that we will be within the parameters of the town um, hours of operation ordinance, which your ordinance is Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. We're not doing anything Monday through Thursday. Friday through Saturday, we're not doing anything on Fridays. Saturday, we would like to probably host, well, that will be the day we host an, an event. Your parameters call for 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. We are actually shooting for opening the gate, letting people come in at 10, which is an hour past your guideline. We would like to operate probably from actually let people have fun and, and start to enjoy whatever activity we're doing from probably noon to five. So that is, we would be shutting down six hours before your ordinance, even though, and we're not doing anything on Sunday. Our hours of operation will be well within your guidelines. As this is our first year, there is a learning curve, so we cannot, this is what I wrote before this, we cannot give an exact time. I'm giving you that time. We're, we're, that's our ballpark time. I got things to do in life. I am not going to be out there till, I don't even want to be out there till dark. Um, G, no vehicle will be in constant operation without a muffler. H, duration of permit. We already went over this. Julian and I understand the special use permit is valid for one year from the time of issuance, and we will always go above and beyond to abide by all ordinance guidelines and planning board advice. Site and data, data plan, um, I did give you a site and data plan. It doesn't, I don't really think it applies to us, but we did it anyways. Um, attached is our site plan accompanied by satellite photo for reference, sound decibel map and legend. You guys have had this for months, correct? Am I going too fast? I feel like there's too many people here I wanna get through this. Um, I have spoken with Faye Birch of the DEC, Jessica Zaramps of Genesee County Health Department, even though that has nothing to do with the permit, Julie Murdoch, that has nothing to do with the permit, from the fire department, EMS, etc. Area variances, we are not asking for any variances. We are well within your ordinances on everything. And if we're not, I am more than open to hearing what we're not. Um, we don't have, the only modifications um, were what the wetlands, we've already given you the DEC, and the Army Corps. Waiver of requirements. We're not asking for any waiver of requirements. Uh, we feel free that we have provided you with all the necessary standards and conditions outlined in the Pavilion Town Ordinance Special Use Permits for Section 612, All Train Motor Vehicle, Track Park. Um, I wanted to touch base on the standards applicable for all special use permits. <clears throat> Join and I have read the standards applicable for all special use permits and also feel as though we fell easily within these guidelines. A, nothing we will do permanently be seen from adjacent property or road. Nothing we will do will cause pollution of any sort, dust, noise, traffic, that isn't already present in the accepted area. We take pride in our investment, and we will surely make this property look and function better than it ever has. If you, if you have driven by there, Joy and I have scrapped over 100,000 pounds, 50 ton of crap, of scrap has been cleaned up from there. We have recycled over 300 tires, I can't tell you how many bags of garbage and nonsense that we've picked up from there. Admittedly, there's probably another 10 ton of stuff. We have, I grew up working for local farms. I love them and respect them. I can tell you they would not have taken care of, I grew up digging holes and burying stuff. I, I didn't do that. I did a damn good job. We worked our asses off cleaning that place up and we're very proud of it. It looks good. <clears throat> our event will be hosted a quarter mile from the nearest house. I have leased the farm ground to a local organic farmer, uh, Brent Tillotson, with the understanding that if at all possible, which it is, the uh, corn is desired crop to be planted so, if it can act, so it can act as a buffer. Pair this with the numerous 30 foot wide hedgerows on this huge track of property and huge mature woods between the event and location in all houses and you have the best natural buffers possible. Your ordinance doesn't call for any buffers like that. There are none in there. We have cornfields, thick hedgerows, and hardwoods. We literally want to put it there so that it is not a disturbance. Electrical disturbances are not applicable. 10 acres have been designated for off-street parking. I'm sorry, that's G, F and G. H, drainage system will only improve with our project. 
I have met with DEC officials and consulted with local drainage professionals on how to properly control any drainage issue on the property. I, we have designated approximately 10 acres of parking and have a 2300 foot driveway and feel confident there is no issue with traffic. We don't have a driveway like that and we're hosting 2500 to 3000 people on our existing party. We get it. Attractive grading and seating is an absolute no brainer. This is a huge investment for us and we are excited about it. To say that we will make this into a beautiful property is an understatement. I have photographed the property before and after and, and are happy to provide you with pictures. We will only enhance this property. Okay, there are no existing special use permits held on this property uh, and never have had any violation of any special use permit. Right of entry, the planning board members are always welcome. And I provided you with my cell phone number. Anybody wants to come there anytime and check this out, I would appreciate it. We feel confident that we have provided you with a thorough and detailed application. We went step by step, not only with us, but with our lawyer, uh, actually three lawyers. <clears throat> I've hired three different lawyers for this nonsense. We went step by step through your town ordinances for this special use permit application and feel confident we fall well within these guidelines and permits. If you have any input or ideas to make this event even better for the town, for our neighbors, for our community, we are open to it and appreciate it. I'm not gonna bother reading um, that next page. Like you said earlier, character doesn't matter. I could be the worst guy in the world or the best guy in the world. She could be the worst person or the best person. It doesn't matter. It comes down to your ordinances. We fall damn well within them. So I won't bother going into the character. Um, the, the, the county has already approved this. They read the black and white. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna touch base on that. Uh, I have hired three different lawyers the second of which I told him I owned five acres and a neighbor bought 110 behind me. I told him I was disgusted with his plan. I showed him the plan and I showed him the ordinances. And he said, I'm sorry, Bob. He says, you want the good news or the bad news? I said, I want the good news. He said, the good news is you still have time to introduce yourself to that person, shake his hand and hopefully form a good relationship because this person has every right to do this due to that town ordinances. It made me feel like a million dollars because I, I then had the privilege of telling him, I'm the guy that bought this 110 acres. Thank you. I appreciate that. I do have the right to do that. I didn't want my lawyer to just tell me what he thought, what he thought I wanted to hear. <clears throat> we, again, we are not asking for any variances or special requests. Nothing. And I feel like I'm, I'm not being stern. Or I feel like I have a chip on my shoulder, which I kind of do. I'm trying to be clear and accurate. And I don't mean to be offensive by speaking like this. Um, why would the town have an ordinance like this or want this? Why would you guys want this? Um, I refer to your comprehensive plan, plan uh, on your website. You are looking for people to invest in this community. You are looking for youth, diversity, new businesses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I quote under your same comprehensive plan, our vision. Efforts to gather, and I'm quoting this, efforts to gather the community, celebrate, work together toward our common goals, opportunities to encourage young people to live in this town. Future land use under your comprehensive plan. A new business being allowed under a new special use permit or existing special use permit being kept in place is always preferable to vacant buildings or unused property. In short, here we are. We, we are what you're looking for. We are the future of this town. People like us. <clears throat> and I won't touch base on it. I, I reluctantly sent out, I, I knew there was gonna be emails against us. I sent out asking for a few emails. I did not realize you were gonna get over 50 emails. I sent out 20 text messages. So not only did the people that I text, I thought maybe five or 10 would reply. It makes me feel like a million dollars and it brought her to tears numerous times. Over 50 people replied to that. That means our friends sent it on and cared enough. And, and, and I had to email them or text them and say, I appreciate it, but you have to stop. We are blowing the planning board's phone up. I didn't even, if I was gonna blow it up, you would have gotten thousands. And you might. <clears throat> this town will benefit from this in many ways. Um, I'm just gonna read a couple things. And I never realized 
uh, how much I like, I love this little town until people started asking me questions. And my lawyer said, you should just make a list of the things that your little town, your little shop party pays for in this community. Um, I'm not looking for accolades or any of that shit. I like this. I enjoy this. I love this. This town saved me. I, I was rough on this town for the first 17 years, and I've spent the last, the last 25 years paying back to this town, and I'll spend the rest of my life paying back to this town. Um, I've given away 11 toolboxes to children in this town. They've all been paid for by that party. Um, I've done five trips for kids, giving them $500. I posted it saying I was going to give a kid $500 to travel because I feel like young kids should travel. And four of my friends posted up, I'll donate another 500. That's the crowd I run with. Um, last year at my party, one of my friends who owns a sticker shop said, hey, sell these at your party. Whatever money proceeds you get from it, do whatever you want for it. Do something nice for a kid. We bought colorblind glasses for a kid in Attica. Uh, my buddy Bruce, just Bruce Schofield just did the Corona uh, Convoy, called me up. He says, let's put this together. I want to do something fun for the community. I want to raise some money for Crossroads. This, everybody's down in the dumps, let's do something. Bruce and I and a couple other guys dove in, we raised over $20,000 for this community. The Margarita Run, uh, I've donated that every year that, that I've been aware of it. Wanna know why? Because there's a pavilion girl, I didn't know what was cystic fibrosis was. That, my party pays for that. Our events pay for this stuff. I donate to her every year because she has a daughter that goes to the pavilion. I donate to her turkey trot every year. She never has to ask me. I send it. I don't care. Every year, I sponsor our kids' soccer, pavilion soccer. I sponsor the softball. I sponsor the baseball. I don't even have a son. I sponsor baseball. I pay for a sign every year to be on this field. Uh, L-timers, every year that the Girls Service League has come to our party, they have raised between six dollars and $700 a year. I think Ms. J said that they only raised three to 4000 I have receipts for way more than that. That party pays for that. That's what these little events do. They get the community together and they raise money for miscellaneous nonsense that might not mean anything to anybody. A kid getting a free fishing pole means something. Pavilion Fire Department, I always donate to it. I've never, I have needed them. They had, the one time they had to come for a heat stroke. I've never needed them, someday I might, I hope I never do. Doesn't matter, I donate to them. Um, as far as their auction, I don't know how much, we never even kept track of how much we spent at the Pavilion Fire Auction. We do it because it's a pavilion. I don't go to anybody else's, I spend it right here. When I do our party, I spend 35 to $40,000 every year. It's hard to keep track of. I spend that money right here. The t-shirts are bought here, the food is bought, it's save a lot, might as well be here. Um, the Porta Johns are spent as local as I can buy them. They're here, Leroy. The entertainment, I hire boys from Pavilion. They play. Uh, it's all spent here. That month, our event, forty thousand dollars, just what I spent out of my pocket, is spent right here, just on that. If you do the math on just what I have been a part of in the past four or five years of fundraisers, I figured we raised between fifty-five and sixty thousand dollars. I don't consider myself a fundraiser. I just enjoy that, and it's my town, and I do it. Um, not that it really matters, but the local gas station, every time I walk in there, they say thank you, because it is their best day of the year when we have our party. They sell out of beer, they sell out of pop, they sell out of chips, they sell out of Slim Jims, they sell out of ice. Every time I go in there, they say it's their best day of the year, and they say thank you, thank you, thank you. I always tell them, you don't have to thank me, thanks for having me. Please tell us when it is, we'll stock more. No, no problem, thanks a lot. That's what these little events bring to these towns. <clears throat> Getting lost on my own notes. Um, this is not a retirement community. This is a great community. We take care of our retired, but this is not a retirement community. This is not a gated HOA community. This is a community that gets together and does things. We are well within your ordinances, our ordinances. <clears throat> we are respectful people. We work hard and we work hard to better ourselves. We work better to better our community. We work hard to make our kids good kids and our kids' friends good kids. Show me someone who has done as much as us and is doing as much as us and I'll be impressed. Especially show me some of my naysayers that is doing for our community what I'm doing. Show me one of them that is raising money the way I am randomly. There are things I haven't even bothered posting about because I don't really care to share. 
I do a lot for this. She does a hell of a lot for this community. We will continue to, but I will take zero nonsense. I expect that you read your ordinances and, and follow them. If there's anything I can do to be a better person or a better neighbor or a better community member or to host a better event, you bet your sweet ass I will do it. But I'm doing this. If we don't do a good job, you don't have to renew this permit. But we damn well deserve the right to at least have the opportunity to do it. I appreciate your time. And again, I don't mean this in an upset way. I am emotionally charged. I respect all of you and I respect all of you, but don't mess with my rights. I appreciate it, thank you. Questions yeah. Clarification, if you don't mind. Yeah, if you could go on to the microphone. So one question I had is on the application it talks about an ATV and automobile event. Correct. So you talked about ATV and what the decibels were for ATVs. What role do automobiles play? Are they there as a car show? Are they on the track also making noise? What how does how do automobiles fit into your plans? That would, the automobile would be in the mud bud, as in your um, ordinance. Your ordinance is for ATV and automobile. So we might need to understand decibels or the amount of noise. Is it in your ordinance, the decibels? That might come up. To be a good neighbor, we might need to understand. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm asking, is there a decibel? No, not a specific decibel. Okay. We do not have no yep. I my, would do. My, my question was. Right, right. No, I get it. Uh, for the mud pit, not for the hill climb and not for an ATV okay. course. All right. Yep. They have mufflers. They, I mean. Well, some off-road vehicles have mufflers. Some off anything in this permit has to have a muffler. I can't have an, uh, an open header. Okay. My second question is, currently you have an event and you have said, and other people have said, 2,500 people come and it's on three acres. It's, it's on five, it's on, it's on, technically it's on eight acres. Somebody else I noticed in the email said it's on three. Mm -hmm. What is the expected attendance at the event? Well, the event that we have now has taken us 15 years to accrue 2,500 to 3,000 people showing up. Truthfully, if we had an event and 500 people showed up for something that were as new, I would be impressed. Do you plan on putting any cap on your attendance or the more people have come, the better? I guess is what I'm trying to Yep, I, I totally get it. And it's a great question. Um, on a first year, I don't see how you can have a cap. No, I, I hope if 500 people came, that'd be great. If 1,000 people came, that would be great. Um, I would be, um, if 10,000 people came here and spent $1 in this town, that'd be $10,000. Holy crap, if they did, that'd be $30,000. Um, but with, with that being said, world-class events don't get 10 to 15,000 people. I don't know how a new person in Pavilion, New York, that wants to have a community get together is going to get ten thousand people. I know it's a great, it's a good question, but I'm saying to you, um, I'm just trying to understand scope. Yep, yep. Well, every year, say we get did get ten thousand people. We could come here next year and be like, okay, we were at your event, you had ten thousand people, and we could go from there. Right now, we've been doing it for fifteen years, a different event, and we have three thousand. I think. The number ten thousand is a pretty strong number. I think the number three thousand is a pretty strong number. I'm giving. I'm not. I'm just giving it back to you. The, the answer, like. And my third question is, and you might have said it already, and I, I just didn't catch it. It starts on a Friday night. You go onto the track Saturday morning. You're on the track all day, or is it? I don't know where thing? you came up with that. Right, Did so anybody so else see me when I said that? So where you, I didn't hear. Okay. You, you totally so, missed so it. Fine. So I don't know who has said this, but that is going around town. And I saw an email. No, no, that I saw an email. I know, I'm just saying, I saw an email that said this is going to be seven days a week, 16 hours a day. Okay, we want to do, I read your town ordinances, the time frame. We would like to do Saturday. Your ordinance is, uh, I'd have to find it real quick, but your ordinance is, I believe, on a Saturday, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. We would like to do 10 a.m., which is an hour past your ordinance, only open the doors to let people in, hang out. If you have uh, whatever vehicle event we're doing, we would let them go from noon to probably five or six. 
Jeff, I got things to do. I'm shutting it down after six. And everybody uh, is off the premises. Everybody, well, people will leave. There will be no uh, vehicles running and people will leave the premises. I don't know if you've ever had a party. It's hard to get 10, 12 year old children to leave in a timely fashion. However, our event, which speaks for itself, you are all welcome to come to my house the day after our hot rod party. Thousands of people there, you'll be hard pressed to find a beer cup. We run a tight ship. And, and we are within your town, your, your time. I'm not disputing that, but I'm trying to understand your clarification on. I understood that you said the events will not be running past a certain time. Yep. I'm trying to understand when will the property be vacated? Mm -hmm. Well, it has to be, the engines have to be off by 11, correct? 11 p.m.? We are hosting this on a Saturday. There's no Friday. We're hosting this on a Saturday. We would like, you have to start no later, no earlier than nine. We would like to start at 10, actually not even start, but open the doors. We will probably start at noon. We will end five or six, let's just say six. We're gonna end at six. I will have every person off that property by 11 o'clock within your ordinance. Answer my question, thank you. Thank you. Is anybody else? Donnie, you wanna throw something at me? You got any questions on the ordinance? All right. Matt, you got anything for me? Good. I think I think sticking to the the, um, the details of it is good. The clarification that Bill wanted is just you know. There's I totally lot, get it. And Bill, sorry if I you were saying Friday, Saturday, and it's like no, I never no, said that. There's a lot that we went through, and the board wants to just make sure they have sure. And, and I actually apologize. It was in my notes. Ask each person. I meant to go down through there and ask each one of you. Um, and you're right, 100%. Stick to it. Are you are you still doing the that was what you came originally when we talked about it. Was the did you read anything about a campground here? No, when, when we did you read? Are we talking about Ordinance 612, correct? No, I'm talking, I'm just saying okay, that. we are talking about 612. That's what I'm here for. Right, I know. I was just asking that when we first met you, I came in and asked questions, which I, right, I came in and asked questions. If anybody ever wants to apply for a special use permit, don't ever come to a planning board and try and learn. Do your own homework immediately. Hire a lawyer, read the ordinance, and know your rights. Because once you say anything in a small town, people will askew it, they will lie, and they will spread bad things about you. Hey, Jesse, just, just to bring up what Deb's saying. Yep. When, when you came to approach the board to mm -hmm. see if, if the interest, is there, the likelihood, yep. that's, that's what she's speaking about. I understand the last that. Last time you discussed with the planning board, the last time you discussed with the planning board, you said your dream was an RV, uh, I didn't say, I, I said we have different ideas on how we can pay for things okay. and what we want to do. I understand that. But we are talking about here. section she's 612. Not, she's not going off of your say or anything like that. She just no, that wasn't, right, right. I get it. That wasn't your say, but we are literally talking about section 612, correct? Like, is there any, have I applied for anything? No, you didn't. But correct. You did express interest to this board at the yep. other day. Right. With this property. So she's just asking about questions. Right, I, I get that. But I was told by someone in this room only discuss this. So I'm like, okay. Correct. And she's okay. asking a question. That's all. Yep. I'm just saying. No, I get it. This board is going any here to say what's what. Perfect. Nope, I haven't put in for any applications or any questions about any campgrounds. Just this 612. That's what I put in for. Thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. If you've seen how I've been attacked for the past four months. I understand. I understand. Yep. First of all, I understand the laneway is very close to a property in going in from what you have right now. Correct. Do you have any plans to make an in and an out? Egress, ingress, whatever. Would you change that? Do you have a, a, a lot? Um, to make a plan, uh, plan for parking. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, will you be able to change the entrance or the exit? Are you planning on doing that just for traffic purposes or whatever? Traffic purposes from the parking all the way up to where the driveway goes out. I have created two driveways. Okay. Um, our concern, because we live in the neighborhood, yep. and we know that noise travels. Correct. Example, that's where, where we are, personally, where I am, where our family is, is about three quarters of a mile away from where your property is. Correct. And I am a little concerned about the noise that 
birthday. Yep. And we've also got kind of three hillocks, and you know, we're going to show you kind of higher ground from the topography. Is there? Yeah. Uh, there's not. There's not three. It's one big hill, but when you read the topographical mines, it's it goes up plateaus. The course goes up. We haven't made any course, but we would like to make something just like everyone else has a course around their property. Right. My concern is is noise drift on any noisy uh, a, a situation where there's a lot of noise that can carry the sound. And I think that's our biggest concern for us anyway, just to get to squelch that. Um, the topography and the where you're falling in stuff might make a difference. Um, and I don't know how you can right. avoid it except if you stick to those hours of the day. Not a, a couple of years ago, there were some burning on that property or near there, and it drifted all the way down into the pavilion. There was a what? Burning on the piles of oh, yeah. and stuff. We had to all those down from town. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that the neighbors won't be having noise and have everything be the same. So I think that's for everybody's concern is the noise. Sure, you know, sure. So, so and, sure. and I think that's why you guys have set in place. A thousand feet as a buffer. There is no physical buffer ordinance in, in your ordinance. There is no physical buffer set that you have to have this or have that. However, I still have hedgerows, cornfields. Um, I totally get it. I totally understand what you're saying. However, I think when someone steps foot on the property and then looks and looks back, maybe people could visualize like, okay, yeah, this is way back. Um, and that's why you guys have a thousand foot. First of all, one of the reasons I bought this property is because when I used to work, I will say the farm, and I love them. One of my jobs was to take the excavator into every hedgerow and knock them down, and I hated it. And I said to this farmer, I said, it makes me sick that we are ripping these hedgerows down. You know what he said to me? He said, well, Jesse, someday you work hard enough. You'll be able to buy a, your own land. And you can leave the hedgerows however you want. And I just bought 110 acres, and I love those damn hedgerows. You will never see a hedgerow come down on my property. I love hunting. I love all of that. However, everyone else has the right to tear down the hedgerows. I hate it. Yeah, the, our hedgerows are beautiful, and, I, and I'm excited to show people it. It's, it's beautiful. Oh my goodness. I would love, uh, you know where Ray's house is? The, the gray house where the gleaner combine sat? If you really looked at that gleaner combine, there was garbage and debris all around that. When you came around back of the house, the back of the house, there was garbage mounted up. There's one tree that's choked about six feet up. Garbage, how many bags of diapers were thrown on the ground to clean up. But luckily, uh, I had a good friend that uh, uh, took care of us and let us use his excavator. And I scooped that up and put it in the dump truck and had to pay to get rid of it. The amount of debris that we have cleaned up there, I hate to sound like a jerk, but we literally should get a high five. We did a damn good thing for this town cleaning that up. The eyesore of a combine, there's two combines on that combine. We scrapped over 100,000 pounds all sat within probably 100 to 150 yards of that road. It was an absolute eyesore, and I photoed it all. How many band, yeah, band, three abandoned cars just sitting on the property? I don't plan on having any campers. Uh, uh, camping. I'm, I didn't think it was, I was just asking. Correct, no, no, no. I don't plan on, honestly, I don't plan on it being, like this got blown way out of proportion. I literally had too much going on in life as far as staying late at something and hosting people. The shop party is a neighborhood 
slash community celebration. That one goes late into the night. All the neighbors are there. This, I literally want to have a fun day with my family, friends, and kids. And it's going to end at 6. We're going to help clean up. And that was your initial? 100%. And then, um, You're more than welcome to. Yep, I'd love that. Yep. Thank you, Liz. Okay. Anything from you? I think one of the other um, questions that other people might have is regarding alcohol. If there's going to be drinking, I mean, you're talking, you know, testosterone and trucks and racing and things like that, and alcohol, people drinking, and things like that can get out of hand. Is that in the ordinance as well? I'm, I'm being serious. It, I wondered if there was something to guess in the ordinance. Um, I'm sure between the, I don't know how many people you know that drink at noon. Oh, okay, then, then, then maybe they will. If they're your circle, then maybe they will. If they're my circle, I'm sure they will too. On a Saturday, someone drinking from noon to six, I don't see why they don't deserve the right to. I could go for a beer right now. Um, and I would, I would say at six o'clock, um, I don't know how many beers they're going to have, but yeah, I'm sure somebody's going to have some beers. If you and Russ came, would you have some beers? Okay, perfect. Good, good, good to know. Then we better close down the softball fields too. Okay, yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate your time. And again, I don't mean to be short with you. I've been attacked for quite a while, and, and I'm I'm not taking this lightly. So, no offense to any of you. Thank you. Yep. Yep. This is all. I don't want to say new because we knew you had a plan. Yeah. Right. So it's trying to understand. Yeah, no, I know. And, and I probably I probably look like I have a chip on my shoulder coming here. After I left that meeting, a certain neighbor went around to every neighbor three weeks before we purchased this property and had told everybody there was going to be craziness and, and booze and drinking and and seven days a week and 16 hours. So then people started calling us and we're like, we can't even go and introduce ourselves to these people because we don't own the property. So three weeks later, we finally closed on the property. And we've heard so much nonsense from people that really stole our ability and our excitement to go around to the community and say, hey, we're joining Jesse, we bought this property. Our first impression was stolen and it was given away in a bad way. That's why I come here with a, with a chip on my shoulder. When somebody moves into our neighborhood, Everyone that moves in our neighborhood, my wife and daughters bake either a loaf of bread or a batch of cookies. My girls make homemade cards and I either buy a 30 pack of beer, champagne or wine. We go to them with our business cards. Everyone that has moved into our community. And there's people here that have moved around here and you bet your ass they can vouch for it. That's how we introduce ourselves. Welcome to the neighborhood. I'm Jesse, this is my wife, Jolene. My kids will all stand up, shake their hand and introduce. That's how, where I'm from on Linwood Road, we welcome people to the neighborhood. We don't go around with a petition and be lousy to them. We at least, that person has not spoke to me once. If someone, anyone in this room ever has a problem or a concern, I'm the guy. Come and talk to me. I'm a good guy. I'm an approachable guy. I'm more than willing to work with anyone. I want to go above and beyond to be a good person. But if you can't do that, I'm, gonna, I'm like a fan. Whatever you throw at me, I'm going to throw right back at you. If you throw me love and goodness, that's what you're going to get. I'm going to cover you with it. If you throw me deceit and lies and meanness, that's what you're going to get. So that's why I apologize for having a chip on my shoulder. We have been attacked for four months now. I, I know you haven't, but I'm letting people know that's unacceptable and I'm not going to take it. So, and I do apologize. I went by my lawyers. I've spent a fortune in lawyers. This was supposed to be a fun community get together, exciting thing. 
and it has turned into this and it, 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 it infuriates me. So I do apologize, you're right. I do have a chip on my shoulder, but it's kind of deserted. And then it's not against any of you. Again, I appreciate you guys and thanks for your time. Any other questions for me? All right, thank you. And I think I think in the effort or in the interest of people this going, it would be good to hear from any of the neighbors. And we go that route. So are there any in this room or are they outside? Neighbors here that want to speak? Um, Hi. Uh, my name is Joel Merson. I live on Perry Road. I actually sold the property to Jesse and Jolene. Um, I currently own five separate parcels on Perry Road. Um, parcels that bought up to Jesse's property, um, which uh, surprised me when I did not get a letter uh, when I was not notified of this hearing, even though I'm a, uh, a member. Um, Rob LaPointe verified that it was not on the list, so um, I don't know if it was because I'm outspoken for this and maybe I was... Um, Sir, I explained that it was because you recently purchased property and the, is, the county correct. ledgers were you not updated. You, Rob, you told me that you think it's because of that, but I did not receive it. It doesn't matter. My name is still on the deed. If the town can't keep up with the paperwork to know who they got to send letters out to, that's not my problem. I never got a letter and I'm just standing there. I own five parcels next to that property. I own 110 acres that I sold to Jesse. A lot of these people here that are making the complaint and, and are against this are people that attend Jesse's party. These are, these are people that own on average less than five acres of property around 110 acres. All of who knew I was selling that property, all of who never got, never approached me asking if they were able to buy the property. They were happy with the three acres, two acres, two and a half acres or whatever they own. They were happy with that. And just to point out too, you were talking about, um, one board member was talking about noise. Um, I believe you live on Route 19, correct? Rogers Road, okay, okay. So you're, you're down even further. But Route 19, just, just to point out, Route 19 on 5-7 of 17, New York State DOT did a study, a uh, traffic study. 700, I'm sorry, 317 tractor trailers traveled down Route 19. On an, and this was an average day in, in, a, in a seven day period. 1,812 cars, okay? Take the tractor trailers, take the, the decimal rating of a tractor trailer with a J freight, or a tractor trailer going down Perry Road and compare it to an ATV, that is going to be a quarter mile from the nearest house. Perry Road on the opposite side has an average of 41 tractor trailers a day going down that road, 314 cars. So there's a lot of traffic on both sides of this property. When, I, when me and Jesse first talked about selling this property, by the time I talked to Jesse, I had several companies that approached me about the purchase. One was a power company, one was a trucking company, one was a cannery and then multiple farmers. And I actually had opportunities to sell the property for more. I decided to sell the property to Jesse and Jolene because of what they have done for the community in the past. And the, uh, they, they explained the event to me. I did my own research on it. And I said, absolutely, you guys can, you guys can buy the property, even taking, taking less than I was offered from these other companies because I wanted to have another community event, just like the event over on Linwood Road in the town. Um, another board member, member brought up the, the amount of 2,500 people that come to the party. And there is, there's 2,500 people there. Remember these many people in this room, I would say maybe even go to Star City and half the people in this room um, attend that party. And yes, 2,500 people come, but these 2,500 people come from all over the world and, and yes, I said world. People come from New Zealand, people come from Canada, Mexico. It's a one day event. People are not gonna travel from New Zealand or Mexico for a mud bog. This is a once a year event that he has where he'll gain 2,500 people. And again, I don't know what this get will, will gain, but when you're comparing apples to apples, it's not. You know, we're comparing apples to oranges on that. Um, one, of the, one of the main property owners, the person that, that went around with a petition before Jesse owned the property before Jesse even had a plan for the property. I will is and, and this and, and and I do have proof of this. If anybody would like to see it, is generally not home from spring to winter. The main person filing this complaint that went around with the petition is generally up at the up up north at their cabin and is generally not home other than to maybe mow their lawn, take care of the house. 
So the main complaint and the main person that gets brought up in this a lot is generally not even at that residence. One of the, one of the other big things that really bothers me on that is there has been, in the last three years, there has been dogs running these properties on Perry Road. The DEC has given at least three tickets and, and, and nothing has been done. We can't even go on our property. Jesse's property, my property, I have nothing. There's no, the, the deer hunting on it has been eliminated because there's, no, there's dogs running. We got five German shepherds at one time chasing dogs 24 hours a day sometimes. So when somebody wants to come in and do something, you know, we can't, we can't hunt our own property because there's no deer there. I don't let my kids go across. I know this is a different issue, but I'm still bringing up the fact that you know, what can be done and what can't be done. I can't even have my three-year-old and my eight-year-old go across the road and, and hang out on a property or go further than 100, 100 feet behind my house because we have, we have dogs, five German Shepherds, and I don't trust them, good dogs or not. But nothing can be done about that. The town has been approached. The, the, this is what the DC officers told me, that the town has been approached, the judge has been approached, the county has been approached. Nothing can be done. So we can have dogs running properties, people getting tickets, not paying the tickets or paying the tickets, and nothing can be done about it. So I'm not able to enjoy my property, but there's nothing that I can do about it. Jesse had brought up the snowmobiles. I live on Perry Road. I live, I, I, I'm, I'm constantly spending time on my property that butts up to Jesse's. Snowmobiles, the greenway is right there. You got ATVs on the greenway. You have snowmobiles on the greenway. Um, there's, before I sold the property to Jesse, I went back to this property that, you're, that, that is up here tonight, and I have pulled out countless people. That was the four-wheeling ATV heaven back there because the owners at the time lived on a different road, and people just thought they could go back there and have a free for all. And there was probably more ATVs and trucks on that property over the last two years than there will be at one event, and nobody complained about it. There's not, there's not been one complaint about these people, these ATVs and trucks that get back there. In fact, some of these people complaints, I pulled their sons out, driving their four-wheelers and ATVs out on this exact set of property. And I want to touch on the garbage. To me, Jesse is underestimating the amount of garbage that was on this property. It was absolutely disgusting. You couldn't see a lot of it from the road. It's been grown up. Tires, cars, People, people would go back because again, the prop, people knew the property owner lived on a different area. People would go back there and dump their garbage. People don't go back there and dump their garbage anymore because it's posted, people know that it's now all. And, but garbage, if they're fresh garbage, diapers, you name it, were dumped back there on this property. And, and, and the other thing, I, I know so many people behind me that maybe didn't get the letter that was sent out had so many misconceived notions of what this meeting was about and what Jesse was doing on a property. When someone goes around, before Jesse even knew what he was doing on the property, he comes and asks questions. I want to make sure that the public knows this. That one individual went around telling every other neighbor what was going to be done on that property before Jesse even knew what he was doing on that property. He did not even have a plan yet, but the neighbor had a plan and all sorts of plans when Jesse didn't even have a plan yet. That to me is putting a bad taste in everybody's mouth. I, I specifically know people that were approached with this and then come to me and say, Joel, what is going on? How could you sell the property to these people knowing that they're gonna do this? And I'm like, wait, back up a minute. None of that is true. None of that is true. I've been copying on emails that have been going around and there is just so much false information out there that it, it's just, it's unbelievable that anybody in this community Somebody that doesn't even spend summers in this community you can go around and get people riled up with no facts whatsoever. And to this, to this day, this person and many people that are, have a complaint against this have not even talked to Jesse or have not talked to me. With attempts being made to communicate with them, have never came to us, Jesse, Jolene, anybody, and said, hey, I heard this is going on. Can you give me some clarification on this? Nobody... The person that did this petition never asked what was going to happen on this property, but it just assumed it. Oh, there's hundreds of thousands of dollars that have been invested in this property already. And that's just with the purchase of the property, some equipment to clean up the property. I've taken equipment down there. I've spent money. Jesse spent a lot of money and countless time. He's got his daughters down there cleaning up garbage and, and just 
you know, keeping the place clean, but also teaching his, teaching his kids life lessons. And um, there, there's just no negative to this whole event. I just can't, I, I must be in a different mindset than a lot of these people that are having this complaint because I just can't see how a few, couple days, three days a year, this can have, do anything detrimental enough to even uh, have put a negative thought in your mind. A little bit of noise? Well, guess what? We live on Route 19. We live in the country. We have noise. If you wanted to do something more on your two or three acres, then go buy more land. But for anybody that has, to anybody to tell me or someone else what they can do on their land when it's well within the laws and well within their rights to me is absolutely absurd. I am not, this is not, I, my name is not on that for men, but I am, I have the chip on my shoulder that Jesse has probably more than any, maybe even more than him because I just, I sit back and I see what's happening with, with Jesse and the neighbors and, and, and I'm caught in between it because people are coming to me and saying, Joel, how come you let this happen? And I'll say, wait a minute, no, this is not what happened. Please talk, talk to Jesse, give him a call. Here's a cell phone number. Nobody calls. But they got they got they got bad information, and let's just say that they got. Now we're clearing this up tonight. Board member, you, you guys are asking questions. Hopefully, we have some clarity. A um, lot of good questions, and I would hope that you know these, these even these people that are against this now that they have some clarity um, can maybe maybe think twice about this because there's just there's so many benefits to this community. I have three parcels of land up there for sale. I have the opportunity, I can sell it to residents, and you guys can have, we can build three houses up there, and we can increase our taxing, we can get the income to this town, or I can sell it to pig farmers, I can sell it to a cannery, I can sell it to a power company, and they can vote with you guys, and you guys can spend thousands and thousands of dollars on attorneys to fight it. We can, it can go both ways, and I'm willing to do it either way, because I think it's absurd that this has even gotten this far. And I, I just think that, um, you know, everybody needs to step back and look at the big picture and look you got to count. I know, and I know it's going to be easier for you guys to say, geez, I have five, 10 people that are against us here, maybe in this room. And it's going to be easier for me to tell Jesse and Jolene no, because they're one, they're, they're one person, one, one entity, than it is to, to explain myself to these other five people. But I tell you right now, between Jesse and myself, if we would not have told people not to come here tonight, you'd have had a thousand people trying to get in this building tonight, minimum. There'd be a thousand people trying to get in here. Everybody, I've had probably 50 people call me today, and I'm not even just saying, what time do we gotta be there? What time do we gotta be there? And I just said, no, the whole COVID thing, and, and I knew there'd be a limit on how many people could get in here, and we said, no, back up. Just, let's take, I think common sense will prevail. The law is the law. I've contacted attorneys. I've spent money on attorneys asking about this myself, because I didn't want to get up here and say, the law says that he can do this and there's different things and there's boundaries and not be right and be actually, you know, saying wrong information, but I'm not. It, it, it is what it is. Um, so, I mean, yes. If we have so many people to pass, I, I, I hate to. Okay. If there's something to add, we are trying to just five minutes. So we can no, but I, but I think, I, I think um, you know, taking up a little extra time being a, being probably the person that sold the property and, and the person that owns the most property and I suggest you, I think they have a right. And I appreciate your guys' time up here. So, thank you. My name is Ron Zarbel. I live on uh, Lake Street, just behind Jesse's property. And we have talked and we discussed his uh, project, which we know is going to be a commercial project in the middle of the residential area. Um, it will grow. He talks about burnout pits. He probably will eventually have drag strips in there. Um, as the gentleman just said, are we we're getting like swimming, or are we gonna go like that? Oh, Every, everybody has a yeah. yeah. Come on, we're just gonna put on that. Sir, the speaker Excuse has me. the floor. Excuse me, if you're gonna if you're gonna interrupt, we're gonna ask you to okay. Yes, yes, ma okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
uh, we know this is going to grow. It's a commercial endeavor. This man is very smart. He has many businesses he's successful at, and he's going to make this one a success. As the gentleman said before me, they're going to have people coming from all over the world. Controlling it in scope is going to be very hard to do. How is the town going to do that? We don't have a cop. And if you call the county, what's the county going to go after him for? You're talking zoning things. So the county can't do anything. When he had his uh, other events, did he ever have any issues? Did he ever have any complaints? Did the police ever show up? According to Jesse, he's never had a complaint. Never. Of course, you won't have a ticket because there's nothing to ticket you on. It's not a criminal thing. Let them talk. Okay. Um, I'm strongly against this, and mainly I'm doing it because of 612, the same thing Jesse's talking about. Now, if you do 612C1, it states that you shall not use or shall not be located within 200 feet of a body of water. There's wetlands and a pond. Now, he's already addressed the wetlands. Uh, it also says that you are not permitted to have it within 1,000 feet of a dwelling. He's conveniently, if you look at his cartoon that he drew up, it isn't a regular plan. It shows thousand foot circles from Ray's house and Mr. Lassiter's house. But as a result, it pushed the property back or the event back on the property towards my house. It's roughly 700 feet. Where's a thousand? His application also states that every dwelling is at least a quarter of a mile away. That's an awful short quarter mile, thousand feet. So just the fact that he's on top of my house by about 700 feet, he says, well, you've got deciduous trees and I'm gonna put in a seasonal crop. Okay, you're only gonna run this thing when the trees are in full bloom and the crop, the corn is at full height. How much is that going to stop when you're running all across the top of the hill? It's not going to stop any of it. It's like having a screen door and you're trying to stop this noise. Now, under section 612C2, the planning board shall take into account the nature and development of surrounding properties. For the most part, the nature around or exactly contiguous to that property is residential. You're taking a residential area and you're throwing a commercial activity into the middle of it. It also says that it should be reasonably protected the public health and safety from offensive and un unhealthy noise, dust, fumes, smoke, odor, traffic, and so forth. If you're talking 2,500 people, and you divide that out by five people per car, generously. You're talking 500 cars. To get that onto the property and off of the cars, you're talking, or off of the property at exit time, you're talking 45 to 60 minutes to clear that area. It's a two lane road up there on Perry Road. Good luck getting an ambulance in there. Or if you have an emergency vehicle, that road is gonna be plugged up. The poor people that do live on that street aren't gonna be able to get out of their driveway. As far as the uh, pollution, you're talking all forms of noise, exhaust, fuels, and light pollution. If he's going to run this thing late, he's probably going to eventually put up light standards. There's no regulations that say he can't run this thing late or more often. The regulations are wide open for that. Anybody thinks that this guy is going to be controlled and kept within a certain bounds, I think by the way he acted tonight should have a pretty clear indication of how this man thinks. He's a winner. He's a competitor. He's going to win. He's going to make this work. To make it pay as a commercial enterprise, he's going to have to put a lot of time into it and run it. Oh. I talked about the hedgerows. Okay, section 612, E1. No person shall operate a cause or operate a course as to cause unreasonably loud and disturbing noise of such a nature, intensity, or duration 
as to be detrimental to the peace and welfare. Okay, what he's, his sound sampling is sort of fuzzy. He did a period of time. We're talking about races or uh, activities that are gonna be for an extended duration. It's nothing like what he timed out. The loudness of it, if you're doing anything with a race car, is gonna be a lot louder than what he's talking about. The modulation is another problem. The revving engines. It's not a constant. If you throw something in a mud pit, the guy's gonna be accelerating and backing off, accelerating and backing off. He's gonna do this all day in my backyard within 700 feet of my house. I can see his area when the trees are not leafed out. They just leafed out this week. It's beautiful, he's right. But before that, it was wide open. And then after the fall, when the leaves fall, I can see this location from my back door. So another one of his lines that he put in his application, it's not true. I can see it, I can hear it, and I'm within a thousand feet. You're gonna have hundreds of vehicles that are gonna be racing, that are gonna be brought in on trailers. They'll be running in groups, ATVs or whatever. Quite a bit of noise. Section 216, part E1. No person shall operate in a manner as to cause disturbing, riotous, or tumultuous conduct within the town. He keeps asking about noise levels. It's just disturbingly noisy. There it is, you can't do it. Anybody that thinks you can put vehicles and alcohol together, everybody, anybody over here at DWI, I'm sorry, um, won't cause a noisy, riotous, or tumultuous situation. It's sort of fooling themselves. I have yet to see a situation where you introduce alcohol where people are gonna be calm and respectful. Um, section 612E2. No person shall operate a course to allow the creation or dispensing through the air of noxious fumes, odors, smoke, or dust to the detriment of the peace and welfare of the people, especially the ones that live right next to it. Exhaust pollution is a problem as most of these vehicles don't have catalytic converters and spew large amounts of noxious fumes and particulates upon heavy acceleration. Tire smoke from burnout pits and time trials will be hanging in the air. Hydrocarbons will be concentrated in the area, imperiling air, water, and ground. Section 612 E1, loudspeakers, which Jesse claims he's not going to use. Eventually, I wonder, there's, there's no rules about it. You can hear Lancaster Speedway two miles away from my brother's house. Even if he tries to adjust it for a neighbor, as he says, what about the other neighbors? He also states that he's gonna work with his neighbors to settle any conflicts that may arise. I think the way he handled Mr. Butler and marginalized the man and had contempt for him, which he seems to demonstrate to this board, where he threatens and bullied almost to a fact that this is my right, I'm going to do it. Seems really a strange way to present yourself as a reasonable person. When I contacted Jesse, not only did I send my questions to the zoning officer of the town, I also emailed him to include him in the conversation. It went nowhere. There was no conversation. He didn't come back to me and said, you know, you got a point, we'll try to adjust this. It's nothing. And I think that shows that he was talking to his lawyer and anybody that thinks you can shut this guy down in a year, is gonna have a half a dozen lawyers on their back next year trying to stop it. Okay. 
Um, essentially, going through the law, I think you have the right, and you're correct, that this should not be approved. This should be a denial. Thank you. My name is Ron Zarbo, and I appreciate your time. Any questions? Thank you. Anyone else for the owner? My name is Dana Foray. My wife, Roxanne, we're on Perry Road. We have 165 acres, which directly is directly across from the property that Jesse and Jolene purchased. I have great admiration for Jesse and Jolene in the way that they raise their children. The work ethic is very, very strong. They're honest, honest people. Um, I can't say enough for, about how much crap they cleaned out of there and how beautiful it looks back there right now. You guys really work your asses off. We have issues with snowmobiles on our frontage all winter long. Not just one day, not two days, not three days, all winter. We also border the Greenway. There's snowmobiles, there's ATVs on there all year long. Not just one day, or two days, or three days. Three days is less than 1% of the year, 1%. You got a better chance of getting cold. <laughs> what I'm trying, I'm not trying to make light of this at all. This is very serious. And we run a business on our property. And the reason that we have our business is so that we can pay the taxes and pay our mortgage just like anybody else around here tries to do. And what they're trying to do is to provide a land legacy for their children. How many people that age can do that? And what are their, your children, you know, are they gonna be fortunate enough to be able to purchase property when they're old enough to? There isn't that property around anymore. It's getting gobbled up by the major farmers. So I just, I, I really admire what they're trying to do. And I hope that you guys will approve the plan. Dana Poray. We have another question to preserve. It's on the, on the east side of Perry Road, directly across. Okay, thank you. You've heard my name. My name is Ray Butler. Uh, I live at 10162 Perry Road. Uh, this project will border my wife and my property to the north and to the west. We feel that this project is going to greatly impact our quality of life and the value of our home. We enjoy quiet country living. We enjoy an egg res district, plain and simple. I have a couple of concerns. I've got them outlined in different areas. For example, the first one I have is traffic. What I did is I researched the different mud bog type facilities within New York State. I looked for ones that had ATV and the truck mud bogs. The one that most closely resembles us having ATV events and truck mud bog events is Maximum Power Park. It's located in Poland, New York. If you Google search that, you will see last year at one event, they had over 5,000 people attending that event. A very similar event, over 5,000. That's over twice the population of Pavilion. They could potentially be in the property next to me. Obviously, that will create some traffic concerns. Whether you figure five people per car, four people per car, if you get 3,000 and four people per car, 
you know, you're looking at 750 cars and you get the 5,000, you're looking at 1,250 cars. Obviously on Perry Road, and if you've got a limited time to go in and out, if you've been to a concert, you know how that works. I've been to farm days a number of different times. It's the same thing there. There's congestion on the road. So as soon as they come into that, if you go to that property, you'll notice on the road, it's a double lane road. I mean, a double yellow line road where you can't pass to the south. It ends right about where that property begins. The reason why is because it's a blind hill where the Falcones live to the south. So when they cross that hill, that is when they're going to see the entrance to this park. And obviously that could create traffic concerns, if there's any backup at all. And I do not see anything in the plans that would address anything that would speed up the entry to the facility which is the 2,300 feet off on the road. What I mean by that is when I go to farm days, there's multiple entrances on multiple roads. What you do when you get off the road is you fan out and you pay your parking fees to whether it's five or eight people. There is none of that in this plan. It's just a simple farm path, a one lane farm path. You can see that in the satellite imagery he sent you. It's a one lane, farm path from the road all the way back to the event parking. So obviously I have concerns with that, the road and the congestion on the road. I also have concerns because of how close that farm path runs to my property. It is 15 feet off of my property. It is 30 feet off of my driveway. If you have been out there and looked at it, it goes, it runs parallel with our, our driveway. Our house is roughly 200 feet off the road, and it goes 40 feet away from our, our garage. Snakes are on the back, and then it's headed west. So we will have all of those vehicles, whether it's 750 vehicles, 1,250 vehicles, going right next to our house. There is absolutely no way, with that being that close, we are not going to have dust and noise. Plain and simple, absolutely no way. Then you also think about that traffic. If it's a one lane road going back there and it's buffered on the back by a hedgerow and cornfield, when that is packed with vehicles going in or out because it's a limited time in, limited time out, if someone has a heart attack out there in the parking area, how's the ambulance gonna get there? If there's a fire, how's a fire truck gonna get there? The back part of that field to the west behind our house, once you get to the one part we call like the fishbowl, so once you get about two thirds of the way down, there's a depression in, in the field. The previous farmer, George Bailey, in the fall when he would bring out crops, he would normally have to go on the brim of that to get his crops out because his tractor couldn't pull it up that hill. So if it's had inclement weather for a number of days and that roadway gets that damage by 750, 1250 cars, whatever going back there, how is a fire truck gonna even get back there? How are police gonna get back there if there's an issue with that? So emergency vehicles are not gonna be accessible to the, where the event is being held during times of entry and exit, especially when it's a one lane road, unless what, they go to the cornfield, or somehow another cut through a hedgerow that's densely um, filled. So I have obviously concerns with that. Um, other things I have concerns with would be the noise. The noise is going to be an issue. I think Mr. Coots's um, decibel reading is flawed. He used stock utility ATVs. When my sons were younger, we used to belong to all county ATV club. When we went to their events, many ATVs there had aftermarket exhaust, which are much louder than a stock exhaust that he tested. And really in the grand scheme of things, ATVs aren't a big noise producer. The big noise producer are going to be the mud trucks. From what I have read, you're going to find decibel readings from anywhere from 130 to 135. I'll refer to another mud bog facility, which is known as the Barnyard Boggers. Barnyard Boggers, Central New York, mud truck, they pride themselves on their noise. Quote, some are high horsepower gas or alcohol engines that are loud as heck, and some are big diesel engines that have crazy black smoke pouring out as they tackle the mud. So this isn't like fantasy world on how big these events, how noisy they can be. This is reality. I went to mud truck events in New York State. 
The potential is for these things to be huge. The noise is immense, the dirt is immense. So when you look at the decibel readings that he showed, obviously it's not appropriate, especially when you have multiple events, whether it's the mud bog events, running with the AT events, the hill climb events, obviously with the crowd, it's gonna magnitude, magnify the noise. I also have some issues with the design of the actual park itself. Corn is screening is ridiculous. The land at this point isn't even fitted to plant corn, let alone having corn planted on it. So if you have an event July 4th, how high, how high is the corn going to be? And obviously anyone that knows anything about farming realizes you're not planting corn every year. You have to rotate crops, whether you're a cash crop and you rotate it with soybeans or you're dairy, you rotate it with alfalfa. So what happens on those years when you are rotated? You put it in alfalfa and it's going to be in alfalfa for three, four years. So obviously that doesn't work. I don't believe that his drawing is done to scale, not even close to scale. When you look at his drawing, his sketch, his hand-drawn sketch, it makes it look as if you can plant corn as a screen between our property and the laneway going back. It's only 15 foot wide. Show me a modern farmer that's gonna plant something that's only 15 feet wide. I don't think that's gonna happen. Also, it doesn't show any setbacks. It doesn't show the wetland setbacks. It does, I, according to my calculations on the app that I have for distances, there's three houses on 19 that are within a thousand feet of the, of the mud bog. There's one house um, that's within a thousand feet of the ATV trail. It doesn't show on the thing, there's a natural gas right away that runs through the central part of the property. That's not shown either. It seems to me that the site plan needs to be done a little bit more professional. It needs to show setbacks. Other concerns. When you look at race courses, in any race course that I know, they have practice nights. So if this thing gets through, apparently there's going to be in the special use permit, absolutely no practice nights. So apparently it's okay to put in there that no one's going to run this other than on event nights. No one will be on the ATV course, no one will be in the mud box. I also have issues with it doesn't show any restrooms, any outhouses. Now, if you are gonna be putting an outhouse within the 10 acre parking area, then obviously you're taking away from the 10 area parking. I don't see anything that even meets, cause it's a public, this is not a private event. This is a public event. So you have to meet ADA requirements. You have to have handicap parking. Didn't see that outlined in there. You have to have handicap restrooms. Don't see that line in there. And once you start taking away from these areas within the parking facility, is it truly a large enough parking facility? On his humble five acres, when he has those 2,500 or 3,000 people, not everyone fits on that lot. Most people park on the road. So as soon as you approach that 5,000, where are these people parking? On the road? So I do not think it is professionally designed. I do not think it is well thought out. Doesn't talk anything about concessions, hazardous material control. So you've got monster trucks out there running in the mud bog. Someone blows a motor, blows oil, or blows gas, diesel, whatever. Are there any provisions to handle that control, that, especially with wetlands to the north and to the south? Didn't see any of that mentioned in there at all. Um, what I'm asking for you to do is to just stop and think about this project. Put your home in my home's location. Would you want to live there with this going in? He's asking for permission. It has to follow all the rules. And I do not believe that it does. There is absolutely no way that this will not impact our quality of life and the value of our home. Any questions? All right, thank you. My name is Guy Lasser, and I'm not used to talking at these things. I wish I really didn't have to. Uh, 
So if I appear nervous, I am. I did meet Jesse. Jesse did come around, introduce himself, um, but seems to be a fairly decent guy. Uh, but I do have concerns. Uh, one of my biggest concerns is um, I'm a neighbor that I'm a good guy too. And uh, if I'm against this, you already heard the stance that Jesse said he would take. And I really don't want to be in that position next to an owner that can take that kind of a stance. And you've seen the stance tonight. He said, it's going in, it's going to happen. And anybody that stands in his way, that's a problem. I don't care. I mean, put yourself in my shoes. <laughs> Secondly, I'm not big on numbers, but I can tell you that three days a year doesn't sound like a lot. If he holds this event on June 1st to July 1st, that's four weeks. Say he holds the next event from July to August 1st. That's another four weeks. Now, as you all know, we don't get a whole lot of summer around here to begin with. So if we got one event in, well, let's say three events in eight weeks in the summer, that's a whole lot different numbers than what he's trying to make this out as, as this 1%. That means most of my summer, once a month, I'm going to have to listen to, you know, this event thing that he's got going in. <laughs> Secondly, um, I've listened to Dana speak. Dana's a great neighbor. I've got a great rapport with all these neighbors. And I, I really hope that I don't, you know, ruin any rapport. But, you know, everybody's got a right to speak and a, a point to their own peace of mind here. But uh, I can tell you right now that uh, Dana lives way back off of this on his property. I mean, I don't know. We walked, he, he lost his finger and we baked him some cookies and we, we ended up making that walk to his house. And I'm going to tell you, it, it was a long walk. <laughs> it was uh, a really long walk. And uh, he said something about the snowmobiles. Well, yeah, they do have snowmobiles going down through there. And my son-in-law was one of those snowmobiles. And I can tell you right now, Jesse, or not Jesse, but uh, Dana flipped out over the snowmobile situation because it was on the front of his property. So when he says that this doesn't, you know, that this shouldn't bother anybody, just a snowmobile bothered him. But now that him and Jesse are friends, that really doesn't matter. And then the, it, and then it, as far as Joel goes, greatest guy in the world, really, really is. Um, he's got property all around the property and it's all for sale. And he's gonna be moving from what I understand. I mean, I don't know if he is or ain't, it's, it's kind of up in the air, but this, this really ain't gonna impact him. He's got all of his land for sale, his house is, I know his house was up for sale and he's talked about moving out of state. So how, it doesn't even affect him. So, but the neighbors that are around there, when Jesse walked up and first met Jesse, he said this was his dream property. And the words out of my mouth was, well, this is my dream property. This is the property that you know, I don't make a whole lot of money in life. We do okay. But it's beautiful where I live. We see the deer out there. We see animals. We see rabbits. And, you know, we have four Pomeranians that run around the yard and it's quiet and it's peaceful. And we were just sitting out on the back deck this last weekend and just admiring the beauty of everything. And we are in a I wouldn't even have bought that property if there was going to be, you know, this big race diesel motor engines things going on. I, that house wouldn't even have been a consideration for me. Uh, we're on the north side. We bought right up to it. So we're, yeah, that's where we are. So, so that's my stance. 
I mean, it's my dream property. And, you know, to have this dream shot down because, you know, he said it has five acres for this event. He owns five acres. He didn't put it next to his house. Any other landowners? Remember, we're limiting time. Mike Fisher, uh, my property is behind Guy's house, um, 60 acres of land. Got a wet, wet, de a wet land that borders right up against the property where they put bulldozers in up there behind the place, all right. <clears throat> uh, just kind of concerned. We got quite a few issues, but I'll make it quick. You know, livestock around there, I got resources. I don't think they're going to be too much into these, uh, all this noise. You know, it's just not the noise pollution, okay? There's some statistics there that were rolled out 47 decibels or something. That's ridiculous. You're going to have probably 50, 100 things running at once. So there's volume, okay? You multiply that times the amount of these vehicles at once. Okay, the CO2 fumes and the dust, I think that uh, doesn't need much further word. You folks, if you were living next to something like that, you probably understand that, how that affects things. And there has been a precedent um, of shutting down stuff like this. And I think they had a few more lawyers uh, with their propane plant than this fellow has for that. And that was a no brainer. We uh, shut that down unanimously, by the way. Thank you. And um, and again, there's some of the same issues. The speed limit, it's a 55 mile an hour highway. We already talked about it being a single lane road. The dips in the hills, you pull out a junction and either had you know, uh, north or south on it, as it hits Perry Road, and especially if you're heading towards Leroy, you can look all the way to the south as far as you can see, and if you're just going, pulling out a reasonable rate and looking, you know, not really a rubber argument, but just driving peacefully out there, by the time you can get a quarter mile up the road, there's a vehicle just right on your ass right there from out of nowhere. Okay, so now there's going to be vehicles parked on the side of the road, Again, it's been addressed about how you can get emergency vehicles in there. Cars parked down the side of the road, the litter, the debris, and in this COVID thing here, there's no sanitation for, uh, you know, affluent wastewater, human excrement. Uh, I clean the whole junction road. I got to clean it every day because the dirt bags throwing shit all over. Okay, that's just people living around. What well, few traffic goes up and down there? So I can hardly imagine what kind of stuff's going to be laying on the road coming from one of these things with these boosters or dope beans leaving this place. Okay, there's going to be beer cans, Big Mac boxes, those cheap Indian cigarettes, and all this other kind of nonsense, rubbers and diapers and everything else that you could possibly imagine. I'm not touching that stuff. I don't think our highway department or the county, because it's a county road, I don't think they should have to touch this car. Where even if there's like a Johnny on the spot, is that thing going to be washed down every time somebody hoses it down or throws a coiler in that thing between bouts with people waiting in line? I doubt it. I don't see how, and it, it, with this issue going on, how that can, anything could even go forward at this point in time just on the mere fact of that alone. And they have a commercial thing where it's zoned ag residential. Where's the, has that even been okay? I think that has to be addressed before this even goes any further. And I have a lot of other issues, but I know time's short. There's other people that probably like to take the floor. And I know this would be a series of meetings. And I don't like to show my whole deck at once. But I just think there's something that some folks, you know, folks got to think about here. Our property value, you know, I'm not going to throw numbers around and brag and talk about them. somebody's on the 4 H club and all this nonsense. I don't even know where there's lines for that in a permit. I throw out many permits in many municipalities. I've never seen a line for a line of BS and blowing smoke up people's ass over a personal project. Where does that even come in? It's ludicrous. You must think you're a bunch of dumps to even bring stuff up like that. It's unbelievable. 
And I, there's just a couple other things here that are that 55 mile an hour thing. Signs, loudspeakers, you know, if this did go through, I think there'd have to be dates in advance and times etched in stone. And who's going to police the noise? I mean, like, like someone brought up before. It's just by the time somebody comes, where's the any repercussions or what's going to stop us? I don't think these are the type of people you want hanging around at one of these in your in the in the township there. Well, I don't know what kind of people do with these things. People that come up here and throw threats at the town board. Pardon? Let's keep it comments to the board, please. Comments are to the board from the speaker only, please. Yeah, I don't know who is talking to. But there are just a couple things, like I said, you know, I got a multiple list and I'm going to just leave it there for tonight. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. I would like to ask at this time if anyone is willing to voluntarily give up their seat for somebody that's been waiting out on the parking lot for an hour and 45 minutes. No one is being forced to leave. I'm not trying to coerce anyone to leave. But if you are willing, we do have other people who would like to come in. Um, are you set on land orders? Let's ask um, Katie Taylor. Can I can say. I'm sorry. Who are you land owner? Yes. Anthony Balance. B A L L A N C. Okay. I won't say I won't take up a lot of time um, and go into a lot of the detail that has already been uh, spoken of and, and all that. Uh, I would just like to say that I'm a, adjacent to the to the property on the uh, in between Route 19 um, next to Ron Zarbo. Uh, and I'm just I guess my main issue is is the decibel thing. Uh, there's going to be noise there. I mean, you can do 48. Obviously, there's no ordinance for it. Um, but we moved in that property 20 years ago, pay our taxes, support the community, just like Jesse does. I've coached Little League, I've done all that stuff. Um, being in that property, um, I'm very concerned about property value. Someone, if I ever do decide to sell, someone going to want to move in there with a racetrack in the back, right? Um, I guess I would just ask, plain and simple, um, if you were in our shoes and the property was directly adjacent to that, what benefits do we receive out of that? I get all the stuff for the community and stuff, and I appreciate what Jesse's trying to do. I think he is a good guy, but it obviously is not a benefit to us, and it wouldn't be a detriment to, to, to our property and our uh, property value. Thank you. My name is Katie Taylor. Um, we own, my husband and I own Pavilion Motorcross Park up on Taylor Road. Um, I just thought maybe I could shed a little bit of light. We own the track since 2009. We host events that are on like a circuit. We have four other, there's four of us all together. We do rotations, we do actual sanctioned events. And when we went to get this all up and running, there were things, that, there was protocol that we had to follow. We of course went to the town, we went through the county. And I think some of the concerns I can, I can completely understand and I, and I can feel for them being neighbors. 
Um, the traffic being one, one of the issues. I get that. When we had to do, when we did ours, we had to have a traffic study. We had to have that done to show how we were going to get people off the road in an appropriate amount of time. We're going to make sure that we have a driveway that has the capacity to bring people in fast enough or exit fast enough. Again, you're, we also had to have insurance. And with insurance, there is also a whole bunch of things that you have to do with your insurance. They might require fencing. Then you have to be X amount of feet away from someone else's property. There's so many guidelines and, and restrictions that you have with the insurance that will protect the people around you. As far as garbage, you again, as part of our plan, we had to have a dumpster. We had to make sure that we had the appropriate thing to take care of everybody's garbage because even though it's carry in and carry out, it's not. So, and it's our property. So we want to make sure that it's clean and it looks good for the community. Also, again, porta johns we were talking about that being an issue. We, for the county, we have to have X amount of porta johns and potable water, and we have to be able to wash our hands in a wash station, and we have to have that accessible to everybody that enters the facility. The number of people that are going to be attending, I, you know, I hear that being a huge concern. We're part of a circuit, and we've been doing this since 09. And the most we probably have ever had on our facility or at our facility is maybe over a thousand people at one given time. That's, that is over an 11 year span. So if that just gives you some sort of idea, um, and the type of people that come, I, I, I kind of find offense to that because I feel like just because they choose some sort of sport and recreation like that doesn't group them into someone that is, um, that litters, is, is pro, has profanity, that drinks a lot. That is not necessarily true. And per our insurance and per our guidelines at our facility, anybody that is driving a, a motocross vehicle, UTV, ATV, any of those things, you cannot be drinking that day. And if you are, you are excused from the property. You are escorted off. And it's usually by me, not my husband. I'll tell you that right now. Because we, I, we have no, no room for that. There's no, people need to be respectful to other people. And I can guarantee that Jesse and Jolene will make sure that happens. I have been to their home when they hosted parties and they've had a whole bunch of people there and they were able to control these people that they didn't even know and they left their property perfect. And when it is your own property, you're going to have pride in that. So the other part is ambulances. You're worried about somebody getting hurt. We own a motocross track. I understand that. But again, you have to have a plan. You have to have a plan in place. We have to know exactly what's gonna happen if somebody needs medical attention. Their insurance might require that they have a medic, that they have to have an ambulance. Those are all those things that the town board has to take care of, the county has to take care of, the people around just have, that live around in a residential have to trust the fact that all of these things are being put in place because those are the things that already are taken care of. Those are already the things that are already accounted for when you're doing something like this. Like I said, we've been doing it as our 11th year running our business and we have, we have never had an issue. We always, you know, we've always spoke to all the neighbors. We've never had a, a problem with that. The sound, you know, our, the most sound you're gonna get is when the, the, they're taking off. So in our facility behind our start gates, you have a chain link fence with the plastic, um, they're like slats in it to keep the buffer of the sound. So that's when you're going to have, say, 40 bikes that take off and there's a loud sound all at once. That's, that's when it's going to be the loudest. Once they spread out and they're in open, it, you're not going to, it's not going to be as bad. And the other part is it's not, from what I understand, it's not residential property. It's agricultural property looking for a special use permit which is exactly what our property is. It's agricultural with a special use permit. So that's a big difference between saying that it's only residential. So I don't know if any of that was helpful to you just from our experience. Um, we're obviously, our track is not in Pavilion, it's in Covington, but I am I, a resident of Pavilion. We live over on Creek Road, which is, won't be far from their facility. 
And in my opinion, we need to have more things like this. And three days out of the year for, to give people something to do recreation-wise, to bring people into this town, if it's all set up and planned accordingly, this shouldn't be an issue. And it won't bring down property values. It's, you know, it's just, if everybody can respect one another and they do their job and they make sure that the town does their job, the county does their job, and Justin Yerling keep things up and keep things organized, there shouldn't be an issue. So, yeah. How close is the nearest resident to the track that you run and how would you resolve issues with um, we've never really had any issues with our neighbors. Um, okay. It's not, they're not far. They're less than a, less than a quarter of a mile. They're like, yeah. Yeah, it's, they're not far. They're just down the road. And then across on 246, you know, they hear stuff. But all of our neighbors, we've been, you know, they've been really great about it. And, um, you know, a special use permit, it's, a, it's up for annual review. I mean, it's not something that, it's just a given once you once you have it. So you put your information in that you put the things that you want for the year, and that's good for a year. If you want to expand on that and do anything more, that has to be approved again on a yearly basis. So, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, they're saying that you can't stop them after a year, but technically, if, if there was an issue, it could be. Yeah, anyone else? Thank you. Okay, we've got four fellow speakers here in the nine o'clock, so we're going to really limit time to questions. Um, we've got Christy Hoffman. And again, we ask, we don't refer to her as a special speaker, but Okay, um, my name is Christy Hope Day. I'm actually not from this community. I'm an outsider, so to speak. Um, I, I live in Orleans County. My husband is from Genesee County. And I think I met the Coots about 10 years ago. My husband had been going to the hardcore happening party for several years. And I thought it would, I really thought it was like going to be a ridiculous drunk fest, like you're testosterone and drinking. And I went to my first one and I, um, I couldn't have been more wrong. I was absolutely stunned by the way that Jesse and Jolene can command respect. Of, I, I thought it was 1,600 people. It doesn't feel like 3,000 people. It, it, it was, I, I, was, I was nothing but impressed with how organized the event was, meticulous attention to detail, the traffic, traffic of the movement of the vehicles, traffic flow, people flow, uh, the meal, um, camping, everything about it. It was safe, their staff is professional, um, very safety oriented. And actually, I fell in love with the fruits. I keep going to the party because I like the I like the party. It's not even about and now, truthfully I've kind of gotten into the heart rod thing a little bit. Um, but yeah, I guess that's just what I want to say. Somebody who wasn't really into it who kind of had my reservations about it. And I I I, I can't find the words to describe how they command the respect of so many people and keep them orderly. And at the end of it or the next day, everybody helps to clean up. The place is spotless. It, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. It's very impressive. So I have no question that whatever they need to do to organize these other events, it will be top-notch, professional. And I love your family, the way you're raising your children. Wish you were my neighbor. Thank you. Howdy. I uh, currently live in West Lafayette, Indiana, and I drove out today to support Jesse and Jolene. Um, I was going to talk about their character, but I guess you all have heard about that. As a former Napa Auto Parts store owner, I have spent a lot of time on farms, 
And it sounds like the noise and the dust and everything is kind of what I saw a lot on the farms. So if it's agricultural usage, it should be okay. And there again, if it's a one year permit, if things don't go well the first year, as much as I like Jesse, then maybe he doesn't get a permit the next year. But I think it's worth a shot just for the community and to bring people like me out. I was at the first party and I hope to be at their event this time. So. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Bruce Schofield. Uh, Jesse made a mention he sent out 20 texts on one of them. So I own Schofield Transfer and Recycle. And, uh, you know, I can first handedly vouch, and I didn't realize it tonight. This spring, Jesse's bringing in truckload of garbage, garbage after garbage, load after scrap, scrap load. He didn't tell me, he didn't ask me to come back tonight and say, you come up there and follow what you tell I didn't know it till tonight, but that's where it all came from. Jesse asked me, he says, uh, you come and speak on my AVA because I got a lot of neighbors that are against me. I said, I'll be glad. And uh, so I realized tonight, I put it all together, all this garbage, all this scrap metal, it shows you what kind of heart and integrity and character this gentleman has. He's a steward of the land before he even opened it up. And I just realized this tonight, he wasn't doing it. But the more important thing, this spring when I called on Jesse, I had a conference back in April 5th. We raised money for Crossroads Health. Raised $21,000. Now there was Jesse, and there's two other businessmen in the building. There was six of us on our team. Jesse and his family jumped on right away to raise $21,000. We all put in a lot of work. As soon as we got it done, Jesse said, what are we going to do next? That was the first thing we said. What are we going to do next? Again, when it comes to heart and integrity and character, I wrote three pages and stuff. We all know it. I could have had five, he could have had five thousand people on his behalf. I can empathize what Jesse is in. I'm in the garbage business. I've been in his shoes. I can't sympathize, I can empathize. I can sit right where he is. Nobody wants a garbage business. So I've had all the everything thrown at me just like he is. It's tough. Us businessmen, you know, we've all heard the saying, a dollar and a dream. We all heard that, a dollar and a dream. If you're not a business owner, you think that's winning the lottery. Well, when you're in business, a dollar and a dream is starting something, taking nothing and creating it. That's your dollar and a dream, creating something. We don't do it for the money. Our reward is we accomplish, we built something, we made a business. I've done it, Jesse's done it. Anybody in business for themselves, it's a sickness we have, a sickness of making a business. Don't take away from this man and his family for trying to start a business. It's going to be a special use for men. You're going to have them come up. And I can speak from experience because I do the same thing. Again, I'm in the garbage business. Hold his feet to the fire. Hold them accountable. There's not too many. My, my kids, I would co-sign for and vouch for. It. I wouldn't do it any for, for anybody else. But this gentleman here, I'd co-sign or I'd vouch for it. He's the only guy other than my kids I'd do it for. If there's a problem in your zoning that you don't want these motorsport parks, well, guess what? It's too late. You should have changed it before Jesse made the investment in the property. But you, you know, you can't lock the door after the horse is out of the stall, too. If, if you didn't want motorsport parks, just like places didn't want a garbage transfer station, you should have addressed it before tonight, but before he bought the property. Now, anybody in this room, I could have, anybody could have bought that property. We're a capitalistic society. We all have the opportunity to buy something and make something of it. But don't, after he makes the investment, don't say, no, you can't do nothing. All the neighbors could have. 
they could have been. They could have co opted together and bought it to, to save that property, but nobody did. But this guy, he had the balls to do it. It's plain and simple. He had the balls to do it. Now don't shut him down now. We're all in this area together. I'm from Stafford. It's all one community. For two and a half months, we've all been told no. So it's easy to tell Jesse no tonight. Make the stance that you're going to bring the community together. Hold his feet to the fire. He's already admitted to everybody what he's going to do. He's been down to throw these wild accusations, drugs and roughers on the road. That's, that, that's bull. I've seen it firsthand how he operates. So I'm one of the 20. I'm speaking on his behalf. Thank you. I do a lot of business in Pavilion. I thank the customers. This is a great area for our business, for our family business. So I want to take this time to thank everybody that's done business, business with us. Thank you. Hi, my name is David Solinsky. Um, I actually am a construction professional. I have a consulting business. Um, a lot of my projects, um, one of the things that I do is helping people get through these processes with planning boards. Um, Jesse asked me to help him out with this one. Um, doing it for him as a friend. I'm not going to charge him for it because I think it's important that um, he has a little bit of um, level of professionalism with this that some people have been questioning. I bring that level of professionalism. So I'm, you know, some of the things that I'm doing with him is going to be helping him, you know, make sure that all your boxes are checked. You know, I take the emotion out of the equation. Um, I'm an engineer. So what I do is I check boxes. If there's a question, we come up with the answer. We make sure that we stay within the guidelines of everything. So there'll be surveys if they're necessary. There'll be a professional plan if it's necessary, and we'll get that done for Jesse to make sure that you guys have the things you need to go through the checklist and make sure that the special use permit meets the requirements of the zone and the planning board and the board. Um, so I understand everybody's been through hundreds of these. Um, there's a lot of emotion, and I can uh, understand where people are coming from. We all invest in our homes and, and things that, we, that are important to us, and when we do that, we um, lay our hearts out on our sleeves. Um, but we have to look past the emotion. We have to look at the facts, and that's what I bring to the table. Um, again, I. I I did this for propane plants, I've done this for um, you know, developers developing things. There's always something that somebody doesn't want to talk about. Some traffic studies, surveys, uh, DEC issues. So if there's anything that you'll have, Jesse has me as a resource. I'm going to help him get through that. Um, if there's questions you have, actually, you guys have my comments from earlier. I sent an email in, all my contact information is in there. I'd be glad to take care of any of those. But again, I check boxes. I have a process. We follow the process. We get our answers and then we make decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John. Looks like Goldman is a the old style. Keep it short. I know that's my wife said, well, I asked my wife if she speaks better than I said, what do I say? She said, just don't get for short. What do I say? Just keep it short. Anyway, I live in Leroy, I've been there 24 years, grew up in Pennsylvania, hence my accent. Uh I've known Jesse for the whole time we've been there. Been to every one of his uh hot rock parties. As a matter of fact, the earlier ones, the motto of my family, if they go to a, a nice celebration like that is to be the first to arrive and the last to arrive. Take advantage of the full fun, and, and and I did a couple years. That's tougher to do as I I age, but the years I've been there, one thing I got to say about Jesse is, well, I'm here because I care, and, and I thought he needed my back. After he spoke tonight, and I got to just to what's going on here, it was obvious to me. Jesse stands well enough on his own two feet. He doesn't need me here. But what I observed, the problem is one is there's alleged drugs that parts. I have to speak for that. Absolutely no, no drugs, never seen them. 
15 years. Drinking, of course. All the times I've been there, I've never seen a fight break out. I've never seen a altercation resulting from angry people jacked up on alcohol that the police had to come get involved in. Never, not a problem. The trash, again, ludicrous. You, you can't go to a publicly, professionally run event that is clean as his party within eight hours of its completion. You won't see it anymore. He's runs a tight ship. He doesn't put up with any bull crap. And, you know, so I don't need to say more about Jesse. The problem I see tonight is we've got some landowners that are losing their civilian. It's unfortunate. It happens every day all over the world. We don't make land anymore. It's going away every day. I think we should be honored that Jesse's trying to do what he is with it, and we're not going to cover it with 15 acres of asphalt and concrete to put a big box store or some sort. This is a pretty neat idea he's got, and I think it's going to serve uh, wonderfully for a lot of people for a long time. For landowners, it's unfortunate. I can understand. I think if you work with Jesse over the years, he will go out of his way to satisfy concerns to the best of his ability without being bizarre. Um, the land was for sale. They should have rallied together and bought it. That's the only way you could preserve serenity and paving believes. I think Jesse's going to do good things with it, but it's not going to be an out of control thing that it, it hurts their property. I think they probably, he probably sounds like what he's done so far has enhanced the property value instead of caused the neighboring properties to decline. So I, I, I think it's a great thing. It's, uh, we live in a, a unique area here in upstate New York. We are here because it is that way. And uh, I think what Jesse has planned to do is to make the test of it and provide a family fun activity for many people to enjoy. That's all I got. I'll be as brief as I can. My name's Rick Sarbo. I don't live here, but I'm here a lot because my brother. Uh, I live next to Lancaster Speedway, approximately a mile and a half away from it. If you to travel like a crow, maybe it'd be only a mile. All right. So it's you know, and in between the speedway and me is everything from a throughway to wooded lots, some six hundred feet deep, some twenty-five acres or more. I mean, it's all you you wouldn't know the speedway was there unless you stumbled on it, unless they're in operation. Now, I don't know Jesse, never met him. I have no bone to pick with him. All I'm saying is what we look at and what we continually look at, I haven't heard here tonight much at all. And the one lady sort of touched on it. We have regulations. We have things we have to do. We had to do studies. We had to do traffic studies and EPA studies and all this other stuff. Isn't that not something he should have done or he should be doing or you could demand that he do? As far as the lighting and the noise and all these other issues that were brought up here tonight, we have dealt with already and continue to deal with every year because just like Jesse, don't take offense. No way, no. Just like Jesse, it's going to get bigger. It ain't never going to stop. It ain't his three little girls and a one four wheeler going up and down the little path in the backyard. Okay? I'm not mocking him. I'm admiring him in a way. Everything I heard here tonight, this guy can do anything. He can do everything. And he loves everybody. As long as he gets his way. As long as he gets his way. Now, next year, 
next year when he comes back and tells you, well, you didn't say I can't, so I'm gonna. And he's gonna do 20 times what he's did this year. And I don't care if he drinks, I'll have a beer with him. I'll have a beer with him. But I didn't see nothing in these plans. And nothing, he seems to have a habit of leaving things out. He tells you all this little bitty goody goody stuff. And then the more you talk to him and the more you question his friends, they contradict everything he says. He planned doing this, right? When you bought the land, Jesse, you admitted that already. He also admits and brags on the internet, I might add, because I'm a hunter. I'm a hunter. And I follow hunting. He's a real hunter. He's a trophy getter. He'll get what he needs to get until you would know in certain terms how he did it. He likes to talk about himself, especially on the internet. How he's going to put a speakeasy in over here. Because Cuomo ain't going to tell me what to do. Those are his words. He's got his friends sort of torqued up that this is some kind of my rights. My rights as an American. We're all American. It was my brother's right to do what he did and to expect to live in peace. It was all these other people's rights to be here, just like you. And he has all the rights in the world to chase that dream, but do it right. Do it legal. Do it respectful of other people. There's nothing in here about the chemicals. This is what bothers me professionally. I've had to deal with chemicals my whole life. The Speedway produces everything from carbon monoxide. I'm not gonna go through a whole list because you guys probably already heard it. I'm gonna leave it for you. The most dangerous thing they will produce is called polynuclears, which nobody brought up here tonight. Carbon dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, lead. Sulfur dioxide. You know what else he likes to do? Burnout pits. Those are right. You get in your car and you see how long you can smoke them tires. Now, some people smoke from here to there. Other people smoke in a static position. But you know what they're doing every time they spin those wheels? They're producing poison undisputable poison regulated by the EPA, EPA and the Clean Air Act. You might want to look up the Clean Air Act. Does what he wants to do fit here? What he wants to do, and I'd like to talk to this organic farmer that's going to buy his corn. You know what organic means, right? Most people who buy it knows what it means. I wonder what they would think if they found out their organic corn is being grown inside of a racetrack, around a racetrack. And then if he sells that corn, let's say he sells it for human consumption, can you guarantee any of these chemicals aren't gonna be in the dirt, the corn, or that people eat, or if he sells it to another farmer. Has there been any studies done on the transmission of particulates through the food? I'm not saying what he wants to do is bad. I'm saying what he wants to do is really not thought out well. And what it's gonna produce in the long run, I'm almost done. In the long run, what, it's, what he's doing here tonight, what he wants you to do is give him a blank check. Just give me a pass for now, and I'll be a good guy. Well, then, if you're such a good guy, you don't care. Do it right. Get the studies done. Put it in writing that I will only operate through one day a week, three times a year, and never exceed that put it in writing that i will not sell or allow alcohol 
that I will not sell food. There's so many questions here. That's why everybody sounds confused. And, and I'm not saying he did that on purpose, but there's a lot of stuff in there that's common sense questions that he never once breached. And I appreciate your time. And no matter what anyone tells you, I can tell you who's racing. I can tell you what the special is at the snack bar at Lancaster by sitting in my backyard. And I'm a race car hat. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not against the car, they ain't against his four wheelers. Just keep it real and safe. Thank you. Thank you. She asked if you like where you live. Do you like the location that you live in? Everybody on the board, everybody in the community. I have a 23 year old son. He goes to the races. I grew up next to the fairgrounds at the David Jesse County Speedway. Every Saturday night, my dad still lives there. Both my brothers live there. You can hear him. It's one night a week in the summertime. It's not light bulb train. It's, it's not that big a deal. Yes, there's some dust. Yes, there's some noise. But, uh, you know, this thing is going to be, I think, great for the community. And I think it's going to be exciting. And I can't wait to have little grandkids and I can say, we're going to go over to Uncle Jesse's and we're going to watch some people do some cool stuff. And lastly, uh, what they said about the respect, this guy respects other people. About eight years ago, my son was in the hospital for 15 days, uh, had a skin graft after a bad burn. The only non-family members that showed up to visit in a strong hospital, Jesse and Jolene, Jesse bought him a stack of hot rod magazines that he still has. Their character is good. They'll do anything for anybody at any time. Call them in the middle of the night. They'll be the first one at your place to help you. So that's all. Thank you for your service and thank you for your time. I'm Carol Freeman, and my husband and I live on Wyoming Road in Pavilion. And um, thank you for your service. 
The thing that I would like to say is that these ordinances and these things that you deal with are for a reason. And if someone is against them, that's their right. But to slander someone, it's not right. I'm talking, I guess, as a mother figure. Um, I feel that the town of Pavilion, we've lost a lot. And you see young people that are energetic to want to do something in our town. And I don't live near where Jesse and Jolene are going to have their spot. But we live in a country, we have a railroad behind us that goes every day. Do we like to hear it? No, but we do. We have ATVs, we have snowmobiles that go by. You're going to have things that maybe disrupt your day. But all I am saying to you is please just listen to some of these young people that want to do something for our town. And someone like Jesse and Jolene, whether they know everything right now and they'll have to learn, uh, they'll learn it and they will do it the right way, the best they can. And I just hate to see people that just will try and ruin other people because they're trying to do something. And I'm not a good speaker, but that's what I have to say. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jerry Harding. Uh, I've been friends with Jesse for a long time, work with him. Uh, I came here pretty much to do a character reference, but I, I don't think I need to do that. Everything, everyone knows his character and the kind of person he is. Um, you can see that by the amount of friends that he had come. And you might say that these are just his friends and that's why they're here, but we're here to support a great man. And, and if you gave him a chance to, and, and would actually try to be his friend, you would see that too. Um, so uh, the people that have been attacking uh, the, the different parts of the, the party, the traffic, the, the parking and all that, um, and saying that he's here not trying to do stuff not the right way. That's why he's here. He's here to do it the right way. If he wanted to have a party and go around everyone's back and do it the wrong way, he would have done it. He would be out there with four wheelers, mud pits, and having a party, but he's here getting that permit to do it the right way, looking for guidance from this board and the community on how it needs to be done and how we can do that to, to appease everybody, to make people happy. Um, if, if the neighboring people could would have come together, come with, come to him and be his friend, he would go above and beyond to make sure that it's not impeding on their property or their their worries. He would work with them to uh, to ease their their troubles, to ease their mind. Um, so uh, what I'm saying is just try to be this guy's friend. Uh, he will work with you, and and uh, and it's just everything would be a lot easier, I guess, if if uh, everyone would just work together instead of arguing. So that's all. Thank you. Does anybody else have some uh, something they would like to say? I have Sir, do you want to come up? I do. She wants to come up. Okay. I, what was your before, during, or after purchasing this property? What was your initial intention to do with it? My initial intention of buying this property is to invest in a piece of property. I want to buy a piece of property in the uh, And I've wanted this for a long time, any piece. Mm -hmm. um, when I look at the taxes, 
and interest on loan, I had to figure out a way, how can I at least do some of The $3,300 they collect for renting the property is not going to work. So before we really did anything, we looked into uh, the town ordinance, I asked questions, talked to different people, talked to lawyers, we're not going to work with you. I came to the town board meeting. Yes, it is, which I should know. Yes, it is in our ordinance. Yes, this is if you can require if you can meet these requirements, you can do this. Therefore, after I left and I knew there was uh, a person there that was already on the fit, uh, I went to a lawyer. I heard that lawyer. That lawyer was my lawyer. And he just kind of looked at it quick and he was like, Yep, that's you know what? I read it. No problem. That's the problem. You better be fine. And he, and he said, he knows this board. He said, it's a very good board. It's a good board. They will actually meet the black and white. They're going to go with it. I felt they're going to understand that, that this is in compliance. I felt like I wanted a second opinion. I got a second opinion. Same thing. I got a third opinion. Same thing. He made a decision. He talked to a couple other people and they were excited and go for it. This is in our town ordinances. We abide by the rules. There are so many things that were said tonight that are not in order. I don't have to abide by all of these. I have to abide by what is in the ordinance that I have to do the job, and I really will. Make me abide by and hold, as Bruce said, hold my feet to fire on what is in the ordinance. Not all kinds of nonsense that we heard, but what is in these ordinances. That's the law. We made a decision, we invested in it, we love this town. I don't even need to go on about that. That is, was not my mind in the beginning, it's not my mind in the middle, and it's not my mind. We have that right. It's not like we went in this and just said, oh, screw it, let's take a chance. I want to go on through it. No, we came to three weeks before we bought it. Yes, it's in our ordinances. I went through this, I, I went through it. I spent a ridiculous, unfair amount of money. Trying to do everything right. I tried to do everything right. So your intention to build this track for fun and for the community. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Everybody, Brent Tilton, grass laborer, and we rent the ground from them. So I'm the organic farmer. If you'd like to talk to them, um, Brent Tilton. They create bumpers for a reason. But do you ever see a sprayer go across the field? Wonder what's in that. Not not just what's coming out of a uh, tire smoking dirt because it doesn't happen very often. Um, and do I need a permit to run tractor for six hours in the backyard too? Type of thing. I mean, it's going to be more than three days a week or three days a year. I can guarantee you that. But I'm not going to speak to their character. We all seen that. But that's just what I had to say. That's the whole went after me with the farm thing. Wasn't really happy. Thank you. Thank you. So, my name is Jolene Coots. I'm Jesse's wife. Um, I was just wondering with um, that you had today for any concerns, do you have any complaints outside of anybody here that came in? Did anybody show any other concerns or complaints with the proposed idea other than the people that stood today? I, I don't believe so. I had not say no. Okay, I yeah, I don't believe so. Today, no, yeah. Everybody that spoke for us submitted anything. It was it's been forwarded not only to Jesse but also to the rest of the board so that way everybody was on the same okay. page. Okay, yeah. so um, so I would say from what I'm hearing sitting there, everyone who has complaints are of course going to be the immediate people surrounding the area, which would make sense. They're not happy because it's changed. Nobody likes the change, and it's one of those they don't want it in their backyard. But yet here in the town of Pavilion, you haven't heard any. Buddy, voice any complaint from Buckman Road or um, any road, any other road. It's just Route 19, also Lake Road and um, Perry Road. 
Junction Road. So it's only surrounding the property that seems to have the concern. We do the hardcore happening. It's a different event. Um, it is at our home. We would not let it go on and for the amount of people and have it go and not have it go well. It is run so efficiently. I'm part of it. I'm happy to be part of it, all of our friends. There's not a flaw there. I could go on and on, but it's pointless um, because everybody's touched base on this. It is clean. We don't have any problems. Any issues are immediately taken care of. Um, there is absolutely no reason why there should be any concern. And I think um, I think a lot of people have, have their own opinions, what they think is going to happen. Um, they're speculating and um, have a lot of subjective issues. Um, we are approved already from, the, I want to reiterate, we're already approved by the Genesee County Planning Board. And they also say there's no significant impact in what we're planning. So again, the hardcore happening, it's taken 15 years to get to the point where it's at. Katie also had said her um, business, it's 11 years in running, they get maybe a thousand people. Things don't happen so quickly overnight, especially the first year, especially this permit is for one year and then review. We haven't done anything. We're looking to do it to make improvements and have growth in our community. So with that, thank you for your service. Thank you for everybody who spoke on our behalf. Would you just bear with me quickly? I'm going to ask the Zoom online participants if they would like to speak. I know it's a little weird, but I'm trying to give everybody their, their shot here. How many are there? Um, seven or eight. Uh, anyone on the Zoom chat? Pardon yeah. Me one second here. Uh, would anyone on the Zoom chat like to address the board? This is Haley McIntyre, I would. Okay, will you give me one moment, please, to get a... Okay, yeah. All right. I am a neighbor of Jesse's. I live two houses down from him. He does have that big event. And let me tell you, the trees are buffering. So what was said earlier is incorrect. We hardly hear anything and we are very close. Oh, let me tell you, I get up the next morning. There is no litter on my road in front of my house, in my yard. Anybody that attends that event is very respectful of the property. They don't just take it upon themselves to pull into my yard or my driveway. They're all very respectful. I've never had an issue. I've lived out here since 1986, and I can't speak more highly of them. So your concerns about the drug and booze, we've had more accidents out here, and it, believe me, it wasn't from the hardcore happening. It was random people. Never once from his event. So that's all I'd like to say, but I just wanted to vouch that I've lived near him with a big event with 3,000 people and no issues here. Okay, thank you. Would anyone else on the Zoom chat like to address the board? If so, please unmute yourself. I will unmute everyone for just a moment. Would anyone else like to address the board on the Zoom chat? Hi, I would. Please go ahead. Hi, this is Pat Fenwick and I live on Perry Road. And um, I just have a quick question. Is this, is this um, are there gonna be more, more meetings about this? Uh, yes, there will be more meetings, but this is the public hearing. Uh, I can't speak to exactly what our restrictions are going to be at future meetings because of the okay. pandemic. Right now, the governor has allowed for all meetings to be virtual, 
but we felt that in the you know interest of community support that we needed to do everything we could to do this in person future meetings may be virtual but they will be posted on the website and they they are still participatory you can still come in on a zoom or depending on what the executive orders say we may do them in person all meetings are public but public hearings have a legal obligation to hear from uh -huh. the public. Is there anyone else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I am going to take the microphone back to the planning board. Um, that wants to speak um, as opposed to close to the public hearing. Motion, motion to close the public hearing. Um, we've got one, we've got a meeting. All votes have to be public, yes, absolutely. There's a there's a regularly scheduled meeting the third Wednesday of June. Am I correct on that? So. Um, thank everybody. You know, thank you all for coming and for your time and um, for your participation. And um, the public meeting is now closed. You should you should take a vote to close the meeting. Okay. Jesse, I would just uh, on staff recommendation, I would get with Dave and also I'm sorry, man, I forget the name that runs the speedway. No, or, yeah, I'm sorry. Um get, or whatever, whatever it is. I'm sorry. But I would get with these individuals that have gone through this process. So a lot of the questions that came up, they, they are inside the code. But like Dave mentioned, there's there's boxes to check. You know? And because of the amount of questions that came about because of this, this application, I would strongly recommend going with Dave so that way he can go through that because you have that section 612, but what that's going to do is it takes you to, and you want to focus on section 808, which is going to be your site plan review and your special use permit criteria. Those are the things that you want to check off those boxes because as a lot of people have mentioned, things that, such as traffic, um, we do have to uh, finish the secret process, which the planning board will do. But those items do have to be uh, taken care of and, and tended to. So get with them, and, and I think they'll be able to walk you through a lot of these that you guys might not be. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, it, it's, it's not something you've done before, so go with those individuals that you have here. For, uh, and that's that's what they do. Any more advice on Anybody have any concerns, questions, advice? Yeah, I would just support doing the fluid studies. Uh, I mean, like I heard you say, I'm outside of a thousand feet from all residents. I heard a neighbor say, you're not outside of a thousand feet of residents. And again, it's hard to go by something that's. We <laughs> also said we were going to drive through. Yeah. Um, again, yeah. if, we can, if we can get the yeah, study, if we get the official mapping and all that kind of stuff. We have the real data for which to make the decision. Mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of the order to delete it. That's why I, I thought I was putting together a good thing, but absolutely. I appreciate it. I'll get with those guys for sure. Okay, anyone else? Okay. Questions are closed to meeting. Questions? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I'll wait to go through the list. You have to say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>